Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well and today I'm going to talk about the four stocks that I bought last week. So um, yeah, I'm going to do a bit of a quick recap into them. There won't be proper deep dives on this just because with it being four stocks that would probably take an hour to do this video if I did a deep dive on all of them. Uh, but I think I've got a deep dive video. Well, I, I have got a deep dive video on all these stocks that I'm about to share with you anyway. And um, to be honest with you, I feel like I might do an update on all four of these stocks uh, at some point because it has been... A while since I've mostly talked uh, about most of them, I think. Uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. If you do want to know when buying something coming to in real time, make sure you join the Patreon. And also on there, I post two exclusive videos a week that aren't on YouTube. So um, yeah, hope it's useful. Getting on to the first stock that I bought uh, last week, a stock that I've not bought for a very long time, which is InMode. So a uh, massive fan of InMode. Uh, the valuation is just so cheap and also the growth is absolutely fantastic whether you want revenue growth, profit growth, the margins are really impressive and this company is doing that well. The, the only really red flag I have about Inmode is that they're, they're that good that I, you, you actually look at them and go, are these numbers legit? That's how good they are. The numbers they're putting up and then the valuation it's at is just is crazy. So uh, this company is currently valued at 3.4 billion. Uh, it's at a P ratio of 26, which when you look at the growth, which I'll show you in a second, does look extremely cheap. And then when you start running the numbers, forward PEs even further than that, you know, two, three, four, five years down the line, you're like, well, this is pretty good going. And um, I've not bought this one for a very long time. Uh, I've not bought this for over, I think like a year and a half now. And uh, it's, one of, it's just one of those stocks that has been caught up in the silent crash that's going on right now. And um, mostly, you know, a lot of the stocks that have been caught up in that are non-profit companies but you've got a company here that is making good amounts of profit that's been caught up in it um, and what has basically happened now is you've got a 52 week high of uh, 99 dollars uh, which was around october time and since then this stock has lost half its value in three months and because i'm seeing such a fantastic company lose half its value in three months i'm like okay i'll buy that dip uh, and you know i've like i said i'm, I'm up on this uh, this is me averaging up a fair amount you know i started buying this um around summertime of uh, 2020 and i am up on, on this position a fair amount but um now that i've got this losing half its value i thought okay i'll you know i got another chance to buy a great company on a, a great dip um, and yeah i've not bought it for a long time it used to be my biggest position and now that i have this opportunity I'm taking advantage of it. Now, if you guys don't know what Inmo do, they basically um, make equipment that avoids like evasive surgery. So, you know, surgery where you might normally have to like be put to sleep to have the surgery done, or you'll have to be cut open to have surgery done. They avoid a lot of that. So obviously a lot of patients at the moment, well, a lot of people in general, I think it's more of a social media trend. I think quite a lot of people like um, take good care of their appearance right now or, think about their appearance a lot more and maybe see something they don't like. And when it comes to like having maybe surgery to improve the appearance, many people don't want that. So you have a company here that provides treatments where you don't have to, you know, be put to sleep for these treatments. You don't have to be cut open for these treatments. Um, and it's just, you know, basically treatments that you would go in for, have them done, and then you would carry on with the rest of your day basically so i think this is a, a company that's doing very well and is in an area which i think will do well uh, going forward and um, going on to the actual company itself if we look at the future growth here you'll see here that historically the, the revenue increase has been amazing the profit uh, increase has been absolutely amazing and going forward it is expected to be a little bit slower than what it has done recently but in mode do have a history of sandbagging guidance and over delivering but even if it doesn't overachieve like it has done previously the growth rate it's going to be at is very impressive and financially health wise it's got a very strong balance sheet it's got no debt on the balance sheet as well uh, and it's sitting on a very healthy cash balance because obviously uh, when you are as profitable as this company is uh, if we just go on here if we just have a look on the so recently their profit margin was 46 percent so you look at the amount of free cash they're generating now that is going to be really interesting in the next kind of you know few few years because when it pays all this cash is it going to pay you dividend is it going to buy back shares is it going to acquire some companies and um, it has a lot of choice and this is what i mean by you know this is at 26 times earnings and it's got these profit margins this growth that's going on uh, it's it's crazy and just on an ownership point of view um like I said earlier, you know, this stock is one of those that you look at and it's too good to be true. But uh, you look at the founder, founder led company with plenty of skin in the game as well, which is really good. Um, and even though the share price has been on a really good run, um, surprisingly not sold any shares, which I thought was very interesting. But you can see here the CEO and the chairman hold 12% of the company. And you'll also see uh, one of the 
the CTO and the director owns 10% stake of the company. So between them, you've got 20, you know, 22, 23% ownership there, which is obviously a really positive thing. So yeah, um, I could talk about this one all day, but just a quick overlook of InMode. Um, used to be my biggest position, one of those companies that I won't mind, once again, getting very high up in my portfolio because I think it's absolutely fantastic. And if you haven't checked it out, I would. Um, next up. Facebook, or should I say Meta now, uh, now called Meta Platforms, but I think Facebook is a, I think it's a pretty well-known company. Um, started buying this one, um, once again, this was before, <laughs> this was my biggest position before InMode came along, so uh, once again, this is a stock that I would be very happy to get as my biggest position once again. I started buying this one because on the share price point of view, it's not done anything for like a really long time. So if you look here, since uh, the last kind of six months, Facebook has been flat. It's not really done anything. And as I look at Facebook and it keeps moving in the right direction and the share price isn't moving and that valuation is dropping, I thought, okay, it's probably worth picking up uh, a few more shares. And even really since 2021, uh, the stock's only really up 17%-ish. And obviously that's a little bit lagging behind the indexes or the S&P 500 uh, as well. And you look at a, a platform like Facebook, um, it, it nowhere near trades at the valuation of pretty much all the other fang stocks. You know, it trades down at 23p ratio, and that's obviously not factoring. This grows a lot faster than the likes of like an Apple, for example. Um, so obviously, I'm picking. I, I really like picking this one up. Um, once again, this is probably one that I won't mind coming. Uh, once again, my biggest position, if possible, at the right time. I would ideally. I bought some Facebook, but if I can get it below 300, that would be a lot better. Um, obviously, as you probably know, Facebook owns many platforms out there, Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, Messenger, um, Instagram, obviously, as well. And also, you know, one of the big things that's uh, expanding at the moment is the, the metaverse, Oculus as well. So going forward, it has, you know, probably very good control over the social media industry. And Facebook is also really good at reinventing itself and moving into the next area. Uh, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, everyone tries to paint him in a bit of a bit, bit of a bad light, uh, but He's quite an intelligent man, uh, so uh, he knows what he's doing up there anyway. Uh, if we go on to what they're expecting to do this year, you'll see they're actually expected to grow 36% this year, which is really good growth. And even going into next year, they're going to grow at 19% growth, which is absolutely fantastic. So, you know, like I said earlier, you know, this is a company that is trading so much lower on a valuation point of view compared to the other fangs but has such better growth than, well, most of them, obviously, um, Google's still pretty strong with the YouTube side of it, and obviously Amazon, but the, you know, the amount of profit they make is still great, and uh, but the valuation difference is, is huge, so yeah, I, I don't mind picking a, a few shares in Facebook up at the moment, for sure. Uh, and the other stock that I bought was DraftKings, of course, so this is now my new beast position, um, well, it's not my new beast position, it's been my biggest position for uh, for a while now, anyway. Um, it overtook, um, in mode, I believe, and then obviously it was Facebook before. So obviously with it being my biggest position, I've got a lot of high conviction in DraftKings over the next few years. I, I think, obviously I've talked about it so much on the channel, so I won't talk about it too long. Uh, but yeah, it's this is stock has been on an absolute crazy drop. Um, it's fallen off an absolute cliff recently. And the thing is, is when you look at the company, it's had a fantastic 2021. So for it to go from a, what's the 52 week high? So it was a $70, $74 stop and it's now down at $21, which is crazy. And like I said, it's, it's a fantastic year and um, in 2021. And just going forward, you know, it's a massive growth sector. As uh, DraftKings carry on expanding into new states, not just in the US, if they expand internationally, they've got the Genog acquisition coming in. Um, yeah, it's been absolutely fantastic. And you look at the progress that it's made and DraftKings is selling off more and more. I, I just keep buying more and more because I just see this being so successful. And if you look at what they're doing this year, this year they're expecting to grow 105% revenue growth. So, you know, this is, a, a, once again, like I said, for it to lose this much value and have such a fantastic year, this is great. And even going into next year, 48% revenue growth, which is, is great once again. So the valuation is, you know, the lowest it's ever been for DraftKings. And, you know, a lot of people use a lot of negativity to DraftKings because it loses money, which is quite typical for a growth stock, but they use it to acquire a lot of customers and then it turns that state that they use to acquire customers matures in three, four years and comes profitable, which you've seen with New Jersey. A few of the other states that are starting to mature now we're starting to show the signs of that. So it gets criticized quite a bit for being unprofitable and losing a fair bit of money. But if you look at the financials, you and not actually like, like do a lot of research in the company, you won't realize that actually this has a very good path to profitability here 
which is great. And the fourth stock, which once again, I won't talk about too much because I made a video on it um, last week, I think it was, um, which was Beyond Meat. Um, I bought a bit more Beyond Meat because it's just absolutely sold off, um, you know, caught up in the growth stock sell off right now. And I wasn't really planning on buying too much more Beyond Meat because I'm quite happy with my position size. Uh, but I have been watching Beyond Meat and the moves they've been making last month, especially with this Plant Burger, the advertising side of it, um, it's, it's been great. And I just got to the point of view where the stock is selling off more and more. But what the company's progress is and the deals with these partnerships and the free advertising they're getting from it all um, is now taking them to another level. So um, yeah, I thought, you know what, I thought I'll just pick a bit more Beyond Meat up uh, with because I've just been really impressed with what the company's doing at the moment and the moves it's making. So not much more I'm going to say than on that one, really. A bit of a short one on that one, just because I've talked about it so much anyway. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed me talking about these four stocks that I bought. Let me know what you've been buying in the comment section. There's a lot out there to buy at the moment, for sure. So uh, uh, I'm sure we'll see a few people saying a few stocks and a, a variety of stocks as well. So, um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it anyway. Um, if you could, hit the like button if you're new, subscribe. And I'll see you next video.